Good morning everyone and welcome to Solar Cabin Channel. Hey, today is the day we get started building on this Shepherd Wagon Vardo project. Uh, so I hope you're as excited as I am. I went and got my materials. I got my, some, some, some screws and some things that I needed to build on it so I can get started on this. And uh, as I'm going along on here, I hope that you went and got the plans so that you can follow along. Uh, go, go to my website, simplesolarhomesteading.com, right at the top, click at the link, download the plans. The plans are completely free, folks, so there's no reason for you to not get them. And that way you can follow along as I'm building this. And uh, one of the things that uh, you may need to do, like I needed to do, is you may need to modify the plans for your size of trader. So I'm going to talk about that here in just a second. Uh, so this is what we're going to be working on. This is the trader that I'm going to be building on. Now, I thought this was a 5x8 trader. That's why I think the guy told me when I bought it. However, I, you know, I should have measured it out because it actually is not a 5x8 trader. And the inside of this is only uh, 4 foot 4 inches, but it is 8 feet long. So I had to modify my own plans, and that's okay. If you get an old trader like this, it may not be the full 5x8, but you can still build this uh, shepherd wagon on one of these traders as long as it's fairly close so that you have enough width on the bottom to be stable, okay? And so you could probably build this even on a 4-foot trailer uh, if it has sides on it. If you don't have sides on it, it's going to be a bit tippy, so I wouldn't build it on anything less than a 4-foot uh, trailer with sides on it. Now, my trailer is... Uh, has different features uh, dimensions than the Lowe's trailer that I designed the plans for. This trailer is uh, like I said four foot four inches wide. It also has 17 inch sides. You can see these side panels here. These panels here are 17 inches up at the top and it's got that rail up there. So in the Lowe's trailer I think I, it, it's only 12 inches to the sides and so you, you'll have to adjust for your measurement so I'm gonna have to adjust my measurements up to 17 inches and if you need to do that on your traders make sure you do it before you start cutting okay and also I'm going to be doing my floor framing uh, a little bit differently is in that I'm going to run the uh, the uh, joist I'm gonna run the joist lengthwise which I'll explain here in a minute why I'm gonna do that and I'm also going to make it instead of the full 8 foot width or 8 foot length I'm going to make it just a little bit shorter because I'm going to use 8 foot panels on the roof where in the plans I uh, put in 9 foot panels so that you could go the full 8 foot length. Uh, it will save me a little bit money if I only use the 8 foot panels and I don't care about a large overhang on the front like I designed in the plans. So if you want to modify that in your plans you can. Okay so what you're going to need for this project is uh, you're going to need some lumber of course and I got my 2 by 4 by 8s. Now I'm going to be doing the floor uh, framing out of two by fours, uh, and then the the uh, wall framing is all going to be done out of two by threes. So I've got enough two by fours here to do my floor framing and also some extras because I'm still working on that mudroom project. And so I'm going to use them for that, and I'm going to use that for the floor framing. And then you're going to need uh, plywood, and uh, I recommend the half inch or what they call 15 30 second inch uh, plywood. And I went and got uh, seven sheets of that which is enough to get me through all, should get me through the floor and the, all the walls, uh, pretty much. And so, dang, plywood's expensive these days. It cost me almost $22 for a sheet of plywood. I remember when you used to get that for like $12 a sheet not too many years ago. So, you know, it's expensive. But, you know, if you get plywood, it also paints up nice and it will last longer in the weather than the OSB. If you want to use, use OSB, you can. Uh, however, just remember that it's probably... Uh, going to need to be painted a lot more often than plywood would. So I'm going to be using plywood. So what else you need for this project? You're going to need some tools, some basic tools. Uh, I've got a uh, drill driver right there, trusty Black & Decker uh, drill driver for driving screws. I got my uh, skill saw uh, or what they just call a, a uh, cutoff saw there, uh, Ryobi brand. And you're going to need a uh, square of some type. And you can just get these at the dollar store. And I've got a couple of them because I'm always losing one. And so you need a, uh, a square that either has metric, if you're one of those people from a country that goes in metric, or I'm going to be doing things in inches, so you will need to convert things in the plans to, in to metric if you want to use metric, okay? Because I don't do metric. All right. Uh, we're the stupid U.S. schools. We only learn inches and stuff like that here. Okay, so you need a square, and you'll need a tape measure, of course. Uh, something, uh, you know, that'll do at least eight feet of measuring, a tape measure. Okay, and then you're going to need some screws, this project. 
and for the uh, oops, I dropped it. For the uh, framing, I'm going to be using three-inch screws. Now you can use nails, but uh, uh, if you haven't worked with nails in that, they're a lot harder to work with for beginners than screws are. And uh, this is a lot faster, so I use screws on projects like this. So you need three-inch screws to go through the two-by-fours into another two-by-four to give enough length to reach in through it. So you need three-inch three screws, screws for that. And then you're going to need one-and-a-half-inch screws. You're going to need the one-and-a-half-inch screws to go through the two-by-four, or through the uh, sheathing, through the plywood, uh, for uh, to put the sheathing attached to the framing. So those are one-and-a-half-inch screws. And uh, for this project, I just got a pound. I got a pound of the one-and-a-half-inch screws and a half a pound of the three-inch screws, which is enough to get me by for a long time. And if I need more, then I can go get them. And the only other thing you need is a beverage of your choice. And I got my coffee, and I'm going to be drinking on this while I work on this floor framing. So I'm going to go ahead and put these two-by-fours up here, and then I'll show you how I cut those real quickly and explain uh, a little bit more on this project. Okay, folks, I'm ready to start building this uh, shepherd wagon on this trader. But I highly recommend, before you start building, is that you give your trader a really good uh, thorough inspection to make sure that it's solid and can handle uh, the weight and also that uh, everything is going to hold together as you're going down the road. Now, this trailer's old. It's probably 30 years old or so. And uh, when I got it, the guy just had this front. He had a uh, come-along strap hooked along it. And so I went looking, and I'm like, why the heck has he got that strap on there? And uh, what, I don't know why he did this, but the bolts had broken loose from the top here. And he just didn't replace the bolts. He said he put a come along to hold the sides together. And that's all that was holding the front of this trader together. So I went and replaced the bolts. That's the first thing I did. And I checked to make sure that he did, had, did, didn't lose any other bolts on this trader. And so I had to replace the front bolts on both sides to make sure and now it's good and solid this thing's really solid uh, and it's also squared up now so that it the framing will all fit in there because it was all ski office before and uh, make sure you check your tongues and your bolts and make sure that you have safety chains and that your ball is the right size for the hitch and uh, other things to look for is to if you've got any serious rust and you can see that this trailer has a little bit of rust it's not real bad it's mostly surface uh, and I'm not going to worry about that right now. I've got a friend that does sandblasting, and eventually I'll have him probably sandblast this all down. And we'll put some paint on it. But it's not structural rust; it's just surface rust. Uh, I checked all the framing bolts. I checked the uh, the spring bolts. Made sure everything is nice and tight. And you want to do that even if you get a brand new trailer, because you know they they have uh, teenagers putting those together. Nothing wrong with teenagers, but they have guys that are putting those together that rush to put the trailers together even when they're new. So go over everything, go over all your bolts and everything. Make sure that you have uh, whatever lights are required for your state, and uh, you will also need a uh, the electrical hookup to hook it up to your truck. And you can buy those if you don't have one already attached to your truck which a lot of vehicle or vehicle, whatever they don't. And they they just come, it's called a Hopkins, this is called a Hopkins towing solution. That's just a four pole round kit. And it comes with the connector for the uh, vehicle and it comes with the connector for the trailer. And my wiring, as you can see, is hanging down there and doesn't have a connector on it. So I'm going to have to install this, but there's no hurry on that. But I'm gonna be installing that so that I can hook it up to the truck. And uh, now we're ready to build. Now you can see that I took the floor panels out because the floor panels, were some really old uh, half inch plywood and they were bowed and warped and weren't put in there right. So one of the first things I need to do is I'm going to cut those floor panels and reinstall those. And then I can start working on the floor uh, framing and I will show you the floor framing here in, uh, as soon as I get that done. Okay folks, I'm uh, building the uh, floor framing now for the uh, Shepherd Wagon Bardo. And uh, as you can see I've got uh, plywood I had to replace those old sheets of plywood they were in bad shape so I cut some half-inch plywood and uh, filled in with those uh, to give it a nice even platform across and just looks a lot nicer underneath there and then I'm building the frame out of two by fours I'm doing my frame out of two by fours now like I said this trader is not the uh, same dimensions as the Lowe's trader that I put in the plans and your trader may be different too so what I want to tell you is just I want to make sure that you understand that you need to leave enough room on the sides of your frame that you can get your side panels all the way down to the floor because your frame acts as the structural support for all of the side walls. So it's important that you have enough room that you can be able to put the uh, side panels on on both sides. So I've left just a little over a half inch, which is my uh, 
plywood is a half inch thick so that way when I put the plywood on the sides it will fit up nice and snug but not so tight that I can't get it slided in and out against these side walls here and then I'm making mine as I told you I'm making my frame just a little shorter than eight feet about four inches shorter that way I can use eight foot uh, ceiling panels uh, without having to cut off anything from the ceiling panels now I'm using I'm running my uh, choice this direction and then I'm going to stub in because I've got extra pieces down here that I cut off I'm going to stub in across uh, with some some stubs across the floor joists uh, so that when I lay my panel down because my panel is going to be just a little bit longer than four feet so I got to go four feet and then I've got four inches over here so by stubbing in I'll have something to screw that down to all the way along to give it a nice firm support and doing it this way saved me one two by four well, that may not sound like much, but uh, you know, a two by four that's like three three dollars and fifty cents. So, you know, if it saves me that much and it still gives me the same support, uh, then I'm going to always go for the solution that saves me a little bit of money. So that's as far as I've gotten. Probably all I'm going to do uh, for today and tomorrow. Uh, what I'm going to do is I, I will actually screw these ends together and then I'll pull it out because I'm not going to try and put the side panels on. I can't put the side panels on while it is in the uh, uh, trader. So what I'm going to do is uh, just do the ends on this, put the frame together on the ends, and uh, then I and put the stubs in, and then I will pull it out, and I'm actually just going to work on it on the floor. I'm going to put some blocks down here, and I'm going to work on it on the ground. I'm going to put some blocks down here and work on the rest of this on the ground. I just put it in here so I could make sure that I was going to have enough room and make sure everything was going to fit. All right, folks, that's it for this video. In the next video, I will have the floor framing and done and sheathed. And uh, we will, and probably have the sidewall panels cut, so you can see how that is going. So that's uh, that's how we're working on this uh, Shepherd Wagon Vardo. Again, if you don't have the plans, go to my website, simplesolarhomesteading.com. Up at the top, click on the link and get you a set of free plans so you can follow along because you're really going to enjoy this and learn a lot from this build if you have the plans in front of you. All right, folks, have a great day.